All right, starting with sugar cookie, check the label and make sure it doesn't say anything else. We are able to roll out sugar cookies three times before we have to toss the dough. So if somebody is done rolling one out, it'll say rolled out once, rolled out twice. Try and make a disc so that way it's easier to roll out while it's still cold. We don't use the whole piece at once because it will dry out. I'll use my pastry cutter, take a piece off, and then wrap the other one for now. A little bit of flour. But not too much. And then the sugar cookie uses the green band. And the whole point of the band is so that way they're always rolled out to the same thickness. And the sugar cookies are rolled out a little bit thicker than the gingerbread. Center and out. I like to flip it over every so often to make sure I know that it's not sticking. And then if it's too big of a piece, then it goes all over and you have a hard time around the bands. Uh, at home, if you don't have bands, having two of the same size, same thickness um, rulers on either side will also do the same thing. So now it looks like it's not getting any bigger. This is relatively a small piece. Remember, it only is able to be cut out three times, rolled out three times, so I want to use as much of the dough each time as possible. So I'll do two of the bears for practice. And let's see, I think I can get maybe two light bulbs. Give that a shot. Ideally, when we are baking, we want to bake the same shapes at the same time. So again, they cook at the same rate. What we'll do is have two different baking sheets for this. So now I can roll that out two more times. Now, see how it kind of made a little spot there? I need to flatten that out. Whatever you put it down on the sheet is how it will bake. So if it's got a big dent in it, it's going to bake and look like a big dent. Oh, see what I did to the bare nose? If I didn't fix it or it wasn't able to be fixed, same problem. And then there's no point. So it's better to roll out again than to have it completely an unusable cookie. fairly close. If these were all the same, this is okay on distance. Alright, same thing with the gingerbread. We're going to check to see if it has a number that it's been rolled out up to three. So if it says roll three times, we have to either toss it or you take it home. We don't use it. Now, at a separate area, you would be doing the gingerbread. And the reason for that is because of the spices that's involved. So again, cover, side, 
And same thing with the flour too, you use a different space. If you go from sugar to gingerbread, that's fine, but you can't go gingerbread back to sugar unless you clean the area really well and use different utensils. With gingerbread, we use the yellow bands. It's a slightly skinnier cookie. Gingerbread is typically a little bit stronger of a hold because of the sugar content. So we can roll it out a little thinner, allowing us to have more cookies out of a batch, reducing food costs. Uh, that also allows us to use cookie cutters that are a little bit more intricate, so that way um, if we used it for sugar, they'd be more likely to break. Now one thing to keep in mind with the flour is that it will bake that way as well, so we would have to use a pastry brush and brush it off like that. Let's start with the favorite, which is the snowflake. Same thing, we want to be really careful if we can how many times we roll it out. So we want to get as close to each cutout cookie as possible. Take a look, make sure that it's on there and it's not all weird twisty, because again, it will make it that way. And anytime we are baking with gingerbread, it cannot be baked at the same time as the sugar. Same reason about the spices. They will carry over. These are a little bit harder to tell if they're done or not. Both only take exactly four minutes if they are baked to the right thickness. Okay, that's been rolled at one time, and I'm gonna continue using it until I roll it out three times. All right, the last step, making sure that it's bizarre. Check the edges. And I noticed when I was first cutting out these trees that they were too skinny and they should be about this big. And that happens sometimes when the cutters are washed. So these will be practice and then these are the ones that I'm going to decorate. The only difference here is that we're using a very small amount of egg white and brushing it just enough so we can attach the almonds. If we put too much on, it will bubble up and crack after it's baked and people will see it and it will look a little weird. After that, this cookie is especially easy to finish. consistent. And these again will bake for about four minutes. The sugar ones should have a slightly brown edge. Once we see that brown edge on any of them, we take it out. That 
and these ones are a little bit harder to tell, but they will darken and dry, appear more dry around the edges. And it's better to take it out and not be sure than to overcook it. We can always put it right back in. Okay, they finished baking, and here are the gingerbread. And you can see there's no shine, they're dry, and they're stuck on there. So this is perfect. You start to see a little browning here, but they appear matte or dry looking, and they don't have a little shine, which you would typically see with the center of the bigger cookies first because they would take longer to bake. Again, obviously we would try and do one type of cookie on one sheet, but these are examples. And then here are the sugar. You can start to see on the nose, any of those little points are gonna be the first ones to get brown. One more thing to note, when you carefully put them on the speed rack, making sure that the paper does not move onto the corner and slant it because as it cools, it'll also dry curved, which is cool if you want that effect, but we don't. And that's it.